Today we will discuss about uh, AC applications of the operational fair. Uh, so far we have discussed uh, about uh, DC applications and then uh, we, uh, we calculated various errors associated with the uh, DC amplifiers and so on. Now, we will uh, discuss about AC applications of the operation amplifier. Now, if we look back what is the operation amplifier and so on that uh, we had seen that in the basic uh, simple operation amplifier uh, was looking like this. We had uh, uh, input stage reference amplifier essentially and that is coming to minus 15 volt and then we are connected this and this is acting as a non-inverting input and then the output was here and then the feedback was given to the minus terminal like this. Now, uh, uh, this is a basic operation amplifier we had uh, discussed uh, uh, initially. So, we will uh, use the same model to see what is the problem in uh, using the op-amp for AC applications because we may think that you know we can have a uh, operation amplifier and then for example, if we want to amplify the simplest thing would be similar to DC we can have a, a two gain setting resistors and give a signal here and then you get the output voltage. Now, the gain actually is given by uh, R f by R 1. In this case, it is 1 plus R f by R 1 similar to D C that what we had discussed earlier. Uh, in A C applications, of course, there are uh, uh, other advantages that one need not worry about the D C voltage drift because if I have a amplifier, then I can always block the D C voltage and take only the A C voltage using a uh, decoupling capacitor. So, we can have a decoupling capacitor and then take the AV AC output. In that case, the offset voltage, bias current error, all these things uh, goes up, which looks to be uh, uh, much easier because the lots of problem get solved because of this, uh, uh, the because of the elimination of this uh, DC problem. But nevertheless, there are issues involved in AC uh, amplifier that is uh, what is uh, what is the main worry is that the stability of the uh, amplifier we have to worry and then the second one is uh, 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 bandwidth what is the bandwidth and the third problem is slow rate uh, related issue. So, these issues creates addi uh, additional problem as far as AC amplifier is concerned. Now, what is the problem due to slow rate and then what is the problem due to the stability. Let us look at the stability problem for that we go back to our uh, uh, operation amplifier circuit. Now, in this case if I am trying to amplify AC voltage for example, I apply AC voltage here and trying to get uh, uh, amplified AC output then we have issues mainly uh, due to uh, uh, there are capacitance between this this, uh, this called Miller effect capacitance actually this capacitance is coming due to the uh, diffusion charges because charge that is uh, diffusing uh, 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 it takes its own time. So, that is uh, uh, represented as a uh, equivalent capacitance here this is the famous Miller effect capacitance and similarly we have uh, capacitance here at the input. Now, uh, this for a single stage amplifier like this, uh, this capacitors create a problem because we might have seen that in our original transistor amplifier that we were using uh, in the conventional uh, uh, circ uh, circuit that we have. If we take uh, this transistor amplifier circuit, this single stage amplifier, and we used to get a gain bandwidth relation like this that is, gain versus. Uh, frequency p plot that we used to get uh, 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 for example, the curve like this. So, this is actually the low frequency region problem is coming because of this capacitor and then high frequency gain is reducing because of this Miller so called Miller effect capacitance also we have capacitance uh, here. So, this low frequency is, uh, is limited by these two capacitance low frequency effect low frequency this actually creates problem in the high frequency. 
So, this problem is there in the operation amplifier as well because after all the operation amplifier if you see carefully uh, 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 what is involved there also you have a Miller effect capacitor and then the uh, input capacitors and the in, uh, actual uh, operation amplifier in the real world kinds of several stages it is a uh, multi stage amplifier. So, essentially if you see the uh, operation amplifier uh, simplified circuit it looks like this that you have the input stage wherein it is a different amplifier here uh, negative voltage and then uh, this is connected to positive voltage. Then this output actually uh, in, invariably applied to the one more stage of reference amplifier again this is given to the minus supply and then this output is fed here and then the other output also fed to the next stage. And then uh, this output is actually given to the output stage which is similar to what we had discussed in the earlier stage. The output stage can serve some more amplifiers that we will see later the current limiting and so on. So, if you see this one this is a minus input and this is a plus input and you get the output voltage. It is a multi stage uh, transistor amplifier. So, uh, now what is the issue with the multi stage uh, transistor amplifier? The multi stage transistor amplifier uh, has multiple poles and uh, zeros that is the worry because for example, if you take this that you have a capacitance from year to year and then you also have a capacitor from year to year and so on that uh, all the stages have their own Miller capacitances and then also you have this. And then also that you have the uh, input uh, capacitor also there which limits the low frequency performance. Now, that is there are multiple, there are multiple multiple Miller effect capacitors Miller effect capacitors. Uh, similarly, there are multiple in input capacitors input cap and uh, the capacity the performance of this stage frequency response performance of this stage is actually related closely to how this is coupled to the next stage and the capacity associated with this. Similarly, the performance of this stage frequency response of this stage uh, is actually coupled to the uh, related to the uh, next stage. So, net result is that if we have uh, several capacitors and then if we try to plot the frequency response of this multi stage amplifier it looks like this that is if you plot. Um, frequency versus uh, gain relation, then you have for example, uh, many uh, three different poles for example, you will get in. So, you have a first pole here and then the second pole in the second stage and the third pole in the uh, third stage. So, uh, uh, this is the frequency response of the uh, multi stage amplifier the, uh, similar to what we are discussing the op amp circuit. Now, what is the issue with this uh, multiple uh, uh, amplifier and then uh, uh, frequency response uh, of this multi stage amplifier? The problem is that the circuit can oscillate, the circuit can oscillate that is the main issue actually. That is uh, it instead of, it instead of working as an as, uh, amplifier by putting the two resistance and now we can we are shown that it can be used for uh, amplification, but actually instead of working as a amplifier it can work as an oscillator if the phase shift around the loop and then the uh, gain the around the loop uh, are satisfied. So, it circuit can oscillate this is the main uh, issue that we have to worry instead of uh, amplifier it can act as a oscillator the reason is that when the here is a pole this is created by one RC component 
mostly uh, it is actually Miller effect capacitor and the resistance associated with that. So, Miller effect capacitor first stage and the resistance associated with the input can create uh, this pole 1 and then you have the second pole here P 2 and third pole here P 3. So, P 1, P 2, P 3 are poles created by the Miller effect capacitors P 1, P 2, P 3 are uh, poles created created by the Miller effect capacitors. Now, what is the problem with each pole we know the period is a produce of 45 degree phase shift, because each one acts as a RC uh, each pole you have a RC uh, filter effect. So, uh, each pole produces a 45 degree each pole produces a 45 degree phase shift 45 degree phase shift phase shift at pole frequency. Pole frequency actually is given to be 1 by uh, 2 pi r c. Now, uh, and as the uh, as you increase uh, as you increase the frequency this has a 20 dp slope 20 dp per decade slope and then uh, uh, the phase actually uh, uh, the phase shift continuously increases 10 times the fold frequency phase shift becomes 90 degree 10 times the fold frequency uh, 10 times the 10 times the pole frequency pole frequency the phase shift the phase shift this phase shift between input and output between input and output becomes 90 degree and also the amplitude reduces by a factor of 10 and also also the amplitude comes down by a factor of 10. The output amplitude output amplitude uh, comes down by a factor of 10. So, when we have multiple poles like this. So, each pole produces 45 degree uh, phase shift here and then at 10 times the pole frequency it becomes uh, 90 degree. The next pole comes again it produces a 45 degree phase shift. So, it is possible at this point you can have 135 degree phase shift. Then it at this point it can become 180 plus another 45 uh, that it creates because this phase shift slowly increases and becomes 180 and then it becomes another 45 degree phase shift. So, the if you see that one then uh, 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 another 10 times pole frequency it can become 270 degree. So, when you have a multiple uh, pole frequency that it is uh, uh, we can have a phase shift of uh, more than 180 degree and if the phase shift goes more than 180 degree and if in uh, uh, feedback we are already giving a, a, a 180 degree phase shift the net result is the amplifier can oscillate at some uh, frequency because of this multiple poles. This is uh, one of the major problem in using the amplifier. So, if you have to use the amplifier for uh, practical use, then only have to worry about uh, this oscillation and we have to make our effort to stop this oscillations. So, normally the uh, manufacturers uh, do uh, the frequency compensation inside the operation amplifier itself so that the amplifier is stable and then it works as an amplifier. So, that is done invariably in the first stage by adding uh, R c uh, at this point. So, we have plus here and then the minus input and the plus supply uh, plus 15 volt supply here and the input stage if you see uh, that you add this R c. So, R c is added such that you can shape the uh, open loop frequency response because open loop frequency response which is uh, like this that is we had shown uh, the uh, gain versus frequency curve there are multiple uh, poles now by one can actually do this 
and bring down the frequency response is a uh, like this as, as if it is a single pole frequency response and the pole frequency is now shifted to this. This is actually given by uh, 1 by 2 pi r c and then uh, one can uh, bring down to a very low frequency and then now this is uh, uh, uncompensated amplifier as without this r c network the uncompensated op amp this is compensation with compensation it uh, uh, you can bring it down like this with this the idea is that we have here at this point 45 degree phase shift and then the uh, uh, phase shift increases and then it can become maximum only 90 degree because uh, for RC network the phase shift cannot go more than 90 degree. Uh, so, it, it acts as if it is a single pole amplifier. So, by by adding adding RC network network the frequency response frequency uh, response response uh, looks as if looks looks as if frequency response uh, frequency response looks as if it is it is a single pole amplifier the single pole amplifier. Now, uh, that is uh, at pole frequency now you can have at pole frequency see the total phase shift will be phase shift will be 45 degree and maximum of maximum of only 90 degree phase shift is possible phase shift is possible so so the amplifier so there is no there is no possibility for oscillation There is no possibility for oscillation. In fact, this is what it is done in most of the operation amplifier. This they call it is a dominant pole compensation. This is called as dominant pole compensation. Now, the dominant pole compensation is good it works uh, uh, always there is no problem at all but only uh, drawback of this scheme is that uh, the open loop gain is drastically reduced we uh, we achieved this stability by drastically reducing the uh, overall open loop gain of the amplifier so the dominant pole uh, uh, compensation is good so if we look at the positive part of it is that it is very stable, very stable. So, you can depend on this, it will never oscillate, but the bad part of it is the open loop gain is drastically reduced. Open loop gain, gain uh, is reduced, reduced drastically. So, the frequency, the open loop again is drastically reduced uh, uh, except at low frequency at all the high, uh, if you look at high, at the high frequency the gain is drastically reduced uh, this is the bad part of it uh, nevertheless most of the op amp particularly the general purpose op amp follow this route that is they do the dominant pole compensation so that we can use the op amp for uh, uh, variety of applications so if i uh, take the operation fair and then uh, look at the uh, uh, closed loop gain then if I put the two resistance for example here to get the give the signal here and then this is R f and R 1 
So, that gain uh, is actually given by 1 plus r f by r 1. Now, this is the gain at low frequency. Now, what effect the gain has got because of this uh, finite uh, closed loop gain because original amplifier that uh, original operation amplifier that we had looked at had a uh, infinite gain and it had an infinite frequency response. That was the assumption that we made and then derived this relationship. So, the uh, uh, ideal op amp, the ideal op amp if we take that it has uh, uh, infinite frequency response, infinite frequency response, then it has, it had uh, uh, infinite frequency response then infinite uh, gain. But then uh, both are not valid for the practical op amp. For practical op amp, practical op amp uh, frequency response is limited, frequency response is limited. limited and second one gain also gain also limited. Now, considering these two limitation, now what is the closed loop gain that you get? Is it true that gain is all the time 1 plus r f by r 1? Actually, it is not true that practically this is uh, this is not true. So, uh, what is the new frequency response curve that you get uh, considering this limitation? So, the actual frequency response will be like this. If you look at the actual frequency response, it looks like this that you have for example, that uh, you have open loop gain after compensation it comes like this a uh, single pole response frequency versus gain. Then if I set the gain, this is a closed loop gain for example, if I want gain 10. So, I put this, this may be uh, actually 20,000 for example, for 7 for 1, the DC gain would be around 20,000 minimum. And then this is falling at the rate of 20 dB per decade. and the closed loop gain 10 at low frequency at low frequency the gain is uh, closed loop gain also 10 as you increase then it may, uh, as you increase the frequency at one point of time it meets the uh, open loop gain uh, frequency response this is the open loop gain uh, open loop gain and this is a closed loop gain it means at one point and there on it follows the closed loop uh, uh, gain. So, the amplifiers new amplifiers bandwidth is like this that is the uh, gain versus frequency p plot that you get that is the uh, amplifiers uh, bandwidth that is a DC this is a gain 10. Suppose for 7 for 1 we have a, a gain gain bandwidth product of 1 megahertz for example for 741 for example example uh, for 741 gain into bandwidth is equal to 1 megahertz that means and the gain is unity the frequency is 1 megahertz for example the at unity gain is 1 megahertz so uh, when the gain becomes 10 this actually become 100 kilohertz so if i have a, that means uh, that is uh, gain is equal to 1 closed loop open loop gain that is uh, that is uh, open loop gain, open loop 
gain is equal to 1 at 1 megahertz. Open loop gain gain is equal to 10 at 100 kilohertz. That means, if I have an amplifier of gain 10, there is closed loop gain 10, then its bandwidth will be 100 kilohertz. That is, if uh, if closed loop gain is 1, 10, closed loop gain is 10, gain is 10, then then bandwidth bandwidth of the of this amplifier this gain 10 amplifier gain 10 amplifier where is equal to 100 kilohertz. So, the gain bandwidth the new amplifiers gain is actually limited by this frequency response that is at 100 kilohertz you will find it is the gain is not 10 actually it will be only 7 because uh, the pole frequency of this amplifier new amplifier of gain 10 is uh, 100 kilohertz that is the pole frequency of the the pole frequency of the gain 10 amplifier amplifier is at uh, amplifier is 100 kilohertz So, at 100 kilohertz, this amplifier will have 45 degree phase shift. So, at 100 kilohertz, at 100 kilohertz, this amplifier, this amplifier will have amplifier of gain 10, gain 10. Uh, uh, at 100 kilohertz, this amplifier of gain 10 uh, will have will have phase shift of phase shift of 45 degree 5 degree that is the if you look at the amplifier and then say gain 10 and if it is a 741 of gain bandwidth product uh, 1 megahertz then this is the input and then the output is here uh, the phase shift between this and this will be 45 degree. So, if you look at this and this, the phase shift is phase shift is 45 degree here between input and output because uh, at 100 kilohertz, at 100 kilohertz. So, basically, the uh, phase shift is given by theta is given by tan inverse of f by f p. So, p is the pole frequency. So, once pole frequency is known and then the upper frequency is known, one can find what is the uh, theta that one can uh, get the uh, at any uh, given operating frequency. So, this, uh, this problem to be understood so that one can use the amplifier properly in the actual application. Now, let us see uh, one of the uh, application uh, uh, AC amplifier application and see what are the issues that one normally faces and then we come back to this again discuss about other issues like uh, uh, slew rate uh, and so on. So, we will see uh, one of the application uh, at this point of time. So, we apply this uh, amplifier uh, or we design uh, amplifier now for uh, the so called lock in amplifier. So, let us take uh, design of a lock in amplifier. Now, the lock in amplifier uh, originally uh, was used only to extract the signal which is buried in the noise, and also lock in amplifier concept is used to subtract out uh, separate out in phase and out of phase components. So, basically lock in amplifier uh, is used uh, to extract extract signal signal uh, which is buried in noise which is buried in 
noise. Typical example would be that if the noise is uh, 1000 times more than the signal and even you can extract the signal uh, uh, without much difficulty for that purpose only the locking amplifier is used. Then the second uh, is separate out the in phase and out of phase component. Separate out the uh, in phase, in phase and out of phase. out of phase common. Like for example, if you have a resistance and capacitor, the capacitor gives you in phase common, capacitor gives you an entity out of phase common, resistance gives you in phase common. So, uh, if I want to find out in phase resistance part of the signal and the capacity part of the signal, one can use the lock-in amplifier and separate out this. Uh, example for, uh, uh, say that is if I have a resistance and capacitor together, this, uh, this gives you in phase common in phase component. This is 90 degree out of phase common, out of phase. To uh, uh, this uh, for example, the signal which is buried in noise is like this that is if I have a signal and if it is buried in the noise where the noise can be several times higher than this, it can extract the signal, this signal alone, signal alone can be extracted and the noise can be reserved. For this purpose only lock-in amplifier is uh, used. Let us see how to design such a lock-in amplifier and how it is uh, working. So, so, what is the basic principle involved in the lock-in amplifier that is known as extracting the signal which is buried in the noise. So, what is done is that if I have a uh, uh, signal and noise but basic principle involved, basic working principle. Now, what is done is that let us assume that we have a, a signal source and then the uh, noise and then I will have a uh, assume that I have a signal and then I pass through the switch then I have a load here. This is a load and then we have a switch here assume this is a signal plus noise, signal plus noise is there. Now, we want to extract only the signal and we want to get away you know uh, from the noise. Take uh, this example. Now, assume that it is a sine wave source. So, I will take this input as a sine wave. Um, input is input is sine wave, sine wave with the noise, noise. Output required is Output required is required is um, uh, required is only only uh, required is uh, DC voltage that is DC voltage DC voltage proportional to proportional to um, person to sine wave. We are not we are not looking for the exact sine wave to be reproduced at the output. We want here the DC voltage proportional to sine wave, but it should not depend on the noise. There is a noise will noise, this output voltage so will not have any component due to the noise. That is what we are looking for. Now how will you achieve this? Now one can do this in the following manner. Assume that we have a a uh, sine wave that is we have a uh, input sine wave like this. Then we will have a switch here, then I operate the switch, switch is on that is this is positive off cycle, you have a positive off cycle 
and this is a negative off cycle. So, this is a positive and this is a negative off cycle. Okay. Keep the switch on, that is keep the switch on, switch S1 on during during positive off cycle and uh, keep the switch F2 on, uh, keep the switch S2 off during negative hop cycle. Then at the load you will get only positive hop cycles. So, the load at the load point if you see you will get a signal positive and the negative is not appearing, you will get uh, this. This is a load voltage. Assume this ideal switch, then I will switch on only when the signal is positive, I will switch it on and the signal is negative, that is when the signal is positive, I switch it on, when the signal is negative, I switch it off. So, then I will get here only the positive off cycles at this point. So, you will get only the positive off cycles at this point. Now, uh, but what is the uh, what is that we are trying to achieve by this? Assume that we have a signal which comes of signal plus noise, then I will draw that I will have a signal which actually has a noise continuously. Now, when the switch is on, then if I look at the load side, I will get during this time whatever was there, it is not a diode, it is a switch. It allows both positive and negative during the on time. So, switch is a bilateral switch. Switch S1 allows, allows both positive and negative voltage, voltage uh, as it is. That means, at the across the load I will get the signal which is, uh, uh, I switch on with respect to signal, I am switching the switch uh, uh, with respect to the signal. So, uh, you will get at the output positive off cycles of course, with the noise, noise may go positive and as well as negative. So, if I look at the signal now, that is uh, 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 time versus uh, voltage if I plot, I will have this and there is no voltage comes here, no voltage comes here. Then during this time, whatever signal uh, noise is there, that also will come along with the signal. So, you will get so, both signal and noise coming here, both signal plus noise is the output, this is the output voltage. Both signal as well as noise are appearing at the output. Now, uh, but negative is not coming, but signal is always positive, you see this, signal is always positive here signal is always positive, signal is always but the second point is noise is positive sometime, sometime and negative sometime. So, if I average the uh, signal at the output, then I will get the signal is continuously added because signal is positive. So, what can be done is that I will have a, a signal and the switch is like this and then I have this, then I will keep the capacitor here such that uh, I can also do the uh, filtering in the following manner that is because I want to store the uh, average the signal plus noise. So, I can do in the following manner instead of having the load like this, I can have a switch, then I can put on RC uh, like this. 
Now, at this point you will have signal plus noise, signal plus noise that is coming here. But at this point if I see that is a V0, then this is a capacitor we are used to average out. At this point I will have a DC voltage, DC voltage, DC voltage which represents only signal. What happened to the noise? Actually noise got averaged by itself because noise is positive sometime and negative sometime. So, the uh, by RC filter action, this RC filtering action, this RC filter action actually removed the noise, removed the noise by averaging. Of course, the time constant of RC should be much larger than the uh, frequency components of the noise, then only averaging is possible. So, we assume that our RC component is uh, very large, the noise by averaging. This, this is if RC time constant, RC time constant, constant is larger than frequency components, frequency components of the signal. Uh, uh, so, one can uh, the noise get averaged out and the uh, it gives you it gives you DC voltage DC voltage proportional to the signal alone proportional to the signal alone. So, by averaging the by averaging technique one can remove the noise. So, basically Rockin amplifier works uh, by averaging that by averaging the noise is removed. So, basically basically by averaging noise is removed. So, this is the basic working principle of the Larkin amplifier. So, this uh, noise rejection happens only if the switching is uh, done correctly because this should be on during the positive off cycle and it should be off during the negative off cycle. Then the averaging can uh, 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 take, then only averaging can take place. So, one should find out what is the true zero crossing points for the signal. So, uh, so for lock in action to take place, then one have to find the true zero crossing points of the signal. So, for lock in action to take place, for lock in amplifier to work properly, to work properly, the switching must be done. Switching must be done at uh, uh, true zero crossing point of the signal. Then only the Larkin amplifier uh, can be uh, useful. Now. Uh, of course, we set here only uh, one off cycle switching that is positive off cycle alone we are switching and negative off cycle we are not switching. We can also do it in both cycles plus and minus and reverse the signal and put it in both sides so that still averaging can be done for both positive and negative. So, we can do that in the following manner. Uh, we can say that how to do the both side switching. So, both, both side switching example I can show you now. What can be done is for example, if the signal is coming out from the operation amplifier, for example, I have a signal that is a AC signal coming out from here, then 
I can do uh, the switching in the following manner. For example, I can have uh, switch S1 and then here S2. I have S1, S2, then this I can take here, then put S3, then also I can put one more switch S4. This assume that I give it to the operation amplifier. So, I give it to a, uh, a different amplifier. For example, I give this, give this, then uh, sorry, uh, it's minus, I keep this, then here I put this. is take it as output, I have R and R. So, for example, if it is a positive off cycle, then uh, for example, if it is a positive during positive off cycle, I switch on S 3 and then S 4 is off. So, I will uh, do like this that is uh, during positive off cycle, during positive half cycle, cycle, uh, I will switch so S 3 on, S 4 off, then S 2 I S 1 off S 2 on. That is during positive off cycle, what I do is I will switch on this and switch off this. So, that signal can come here and half of the signal will appear here. So, you will get whatever voltage there, half the voltage will be appearing at this point. So, V by 2 you will get. And then uh, this switch is open at the time and this is on. That means, now it is acting as a uh, non-inverting amplifier. So, if you have V here at this point, at this point V by 2 you will get and then that is multiplied by 2 because if I make this also equal to R, this resistance also equal to R. Then whatever voltage V here and that becomes V by 2 and multiplied by 2 that gives you V here. So, uh, this makes, that means this action makes it, it is it, it is a non-inverting amplifier, non-inverting inverting amplifier of gain 1, of gain 1. Uh, that means, uh, the whatever input voltage is there, that will appear as it is at the output. So, if this has a noise plus signal plus noise, during that time whatever was that the same thing will appear at the output. So, non inverting amplifier of gain 1 that is uh, output will be output will be same as input. The signal plus noise will appear as it is that is signal plus noise plus noise will appear as it is. Now, during the negative off cycle, so during the negative off cycle we discuss negative off cycle, negative off cycle of the signal. What you do is we will reverse the action that is I will keep S 3, S 3 off S 4 on, S 1 on, S 2 off. That is what you do is in the negative off cycle, the negative off cycle I will keep this open and this is closed. So, that you know the plus input is grounded. Now, S 3 is open. So, no signal is coming here and then now S 1 is on. So, whatever signal is negative signal is there it will come here and S 2 is open. So, that signal will be up, uh, applied here and this acting as a inverting amplifier. So, this action gives 
it becomes an inverting amplifier. It becomes an inverting amplifier. amplifier. So, now output will be output output will be will be uh, 180 degree phase shifted phase shifted that is minus uh, the signal will become uh, plus that is signal become that is uh, signal signal again again becomes positive at the output at the output. So, uh, net result is that if I look at the output V naught, if I look at the output uh, V naught here. So, you will have if the switches are switched correctly that is during positive uh, uh, off cycle of the signal that is if I have a signal here we have a signal here which is positive and negative. During the positive off cycle assume that you have a signal during positive off cycle you will get the positive signal as it is. During the negative off cycle during the negative off cycle of this then since the signal is going now through this route and get inverted and come. So, the in minus signal get inverted you will come a plus again. So, again you will get uh, the signal like this. So, if we plot the uh, if we look at the output voltage V naught that looks like this. So, the output voltage V naught that is output voltage. So, time versus voltage if I plot that it looks like this. Because whatever noise is there that will be there plus and minus that will be going both plus and minus. So, you get this is signal and that is the noise that is coming here. So, now we got uh, it is not a rectifier you know in rectifier you will never get this minus voltage in minus voltage if you put a diode then I will get uh, uh, signal positive a noise of positive alone will come noise of negative will not come if noise of negative is not coming then there is no question of any uh, uh, signal averaging. So, it is a switch which allows both positive and negative, but we are uh, switching on at appropriate time with respect to signal. So, taking signal as a reference we are switching that is the crux of uh, uh, lock in amplifier working. So, if I now filter this that is whatever the uh, noise voltage that we have got at the output. Now, if I pass through the RC filter. So, this is the uh, output of the amplifier that we have got here. So, we have these switches and then uh, this is a different amplifier. So, we had these switches here and then we have So, this is the input signal. So, now we will have this averaging R c the time constant of R c is much larger than the uh, noise frequency then you will get here D c voltage here D c voltage D c voltage proportional to the proportional to the signal noise is actually getting averaged by themselves noise the noise is getting averaged out and noise is getting averaged out this is a wonderful technique to reject the noise uh, and extract the signal. This was extensively used uh, uh, in electronics uh, wherever we are processing the signal. So, the lock in amplifier technique uh, uh, by averaging means we can uh, extract the signal which is buried in the noise. 
Now, in the beginning we, uh, we said that Lacan amplifier is used for two purpose, one is for uh, exciting the signal which is buried in the noise, other one is uh, to separate out in phase and out of phase component. So, how in phase and out of phase component is separate out? How uh, in phase and out of phase component is separate out? Components because this is also required at many places. For example, in if you take an induction motor, uh, the in phase component is actually produce the magnetic field, and then uh, in phase component produce the load current. Uh, load current is actually in phase, and then the magnetic field, the torque producing component is out of phase 90 degree out of phase comment. Similarly, inductor and capacitor if I take uh, uh, the capacitor current is 90 degree out of phase uh, component with respect to resistance or with respect to applied voltage. Uh, similarly, if I take an inductor that uh, uh, inductor current is 90 degree phase shifted with respect to the applied voltage. So, many times you want separate out uh, resistance with the capacitor or resistance with the inductor uh, or capacitor and inductor to be separate out. In that case, it is essential that we uh, separate out in phase and out of phase component. This also can be done using a lock in amplifier. Only thing is we need to switch them correctly. Uh, this uh, switches S1, S2, S3, S4 are to be switched correctly such that they can be uh, the, these comments can be separated out. Uh, because once you separate out in phase and out of phase components, uh, they can be used for many purposes. For example, if I want to control the induction motor. Uh, if I want to vary the for example, speed, I can I had find out the in phase component, then I can control what is the flux level, the, I can control the out of phase component, so that I can control the flux level in the motor. Uh, similarly, if I know the in phase component, I know the, I know the low level of the motor. So, that way you know they call this the vector control of the induction motor. Uh, uh, we, uh, like that very many applications are there. This we see in the uh, next class how to separate out these components and how to design a lock in amplifier uh, 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 in detail. So, we will see in the next class how to design the uh, lock in amplifier. So, I stop uh, today with this. Thank you.